Good evening, everybody. Good evening. In house and online, we welcome all. Amen. You ready to worship the Lord? All right, let's stand before the Lord tonight. And once again, if you need to sit, feel comfortable doing that, that's all right. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to be able to come into your presence, Lord, to be able to lift our hands and hearts and voices unto you and to worship you and exalt you and glorify you and declare you as worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We pray that you'd anoint this evening's worship, the giving, preaching, praying, and everything that happens here, Lord. We offer it all to you, dear God. In Jesus' holy and powerful name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's worship the Lord together. My Savior, Redeemer, listen me from the mind of Almighty, forever. I will never be the same to you, Amen. From the everlasting to the world we live by His only Son. You live, you die.
aren't you glad that he gives hope to the hopeless? Amen. He brings light where there's darkness. He lightens the pathway. Amen. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, dear God, for your, uh, for your love for us, your mercy, your grace. We thank you for your sweet presence in this place, oh God. And Lord, we pray that you pour out your spirit tonight in a very mighty and powerful way as we move forward, dear Lord. Have your way in this place, dear God. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise God. God is good. God is good. God is so good. All the time. Amen. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, if anybody uh, has an offering tonight, you can just raise your hand and let Diane know and um, you know, you give it to her directly, okay? Uh, with a smaller group, sometimes it just works better that way. So, um, All right. Um, keep in mind this next week, uh, uh, teen youth group on 6.30 on Tuesdays and our midweek Bible study, 6.30 on Wednesdays, our uh, morning, that's right, morning Bible study at 10 at Nancy's house, amen, and uh, 9 o'clock on Thursday morning is prayer, right? Yes. So, amen. All right. Anybody have a testimony tonight? Some answered prayer, something God has done? Uh, anybody have a testimony? I would just like to say I told Aaron tonight when I got here how much uh, I enjoyed uh, the worship this morning that there was such a strong presence of the Lord and I said in that song when we sing that one I speak Jesus when we get to that part I feel like there's so many people in our in our church probably online too but um, people that are praying for their families and there's something about that line when we sing that I speak Jesus for my family I feel such power in that it just faith rises up in me there's just something when we sing that song, and I know there's a lot of people here that that also speaks to you, you know, that just got to keep praying for our families, you know, and that there's such power in speaking Jesus over them and being an example and a witness. And Aaron, yes. Yeah. For the online folks, amen. How many of you know that uh, Tom and Cheryl watch this? Uh, they watch our morning and our night services, right? Amen. Yes. So Hi, they Tom still feel like part of all of this. You know. all right. We're all waving. Okay, so this morning was really profound for me, too, because first of all, we weren't going to do that song, I Speak Jesus. We had a whole different song that we picked out that put in that spot, but we didn't have the words for it yet. Yeah. And, you know, we, we, it could probably use a little more work. It's a new song. So we pulled that out and put in I Speak Jesus at the last minute. Um, and it really, I mean, it was meant to be sung this morning is at I, I almost got overwhelmed and I was like no I need to keep playing I gotta pay attention to what's going on here but um the the Lord dropped a bunch of different things into my spirit today and one of them one of them was just lately just the name of Jesus has been so powerful yeah it's just it's it's been popping into my head all the time because you can speak Jesus into almost anything if you're afraid you just speak the name of Jesus and it's supposed to flee you know and so I just was kept thinking this morning, there's, there's got to be a, a, a whole sermon about just his name, you know. And then the other thing I was thinking about. Before you go there. Yeah. Tom preached this morning about the name of Jesus up in Monaco. Yes, oh he did. Oh, my gosh. That's and what I was thinking about. And they used that same song up there. Oh, my gosh. That's they had awesome. great worship up there, too. So that was, that was running through my heart. And then it, there was a couple other things. So first of all, I... You know, you know how when people say, don't let it get weird, you know, don't let it get weird because you get those uncomfortable silences or those people don't know what to say because they're like kind of nervous or feel scared or whatever. I always try to be so careful around people so that I don't make them uncomfortable. And this morning I was thinking about my family and I just felt like God said, let it get weird. Just let it, just let it get weird. Who cares if it's awkward? Just l let's get weird, you know? So that, I just, that, that was all it was, was let it get weird. And I knew exactly what it meant. Um, you know exactly what it meant. Yeah, I, yeah. I just, I just, I knew. Let God I knew go. Let him have his way, right? Yeah, 
And then the other thing, we, you were speaking this morning about, um, oh no, I lost my train of thought, but we, we, what you were talking about this morning got me thinking about how, so there's, there's in, in Star Trek, sci-fi stuff, you know, they, and, and there's lots of, lots of movies. Where's Christopher? He would totally be on the ball here for this. Um, okay. Okay, so and there's there's lots of movies where the people are like they they've had this secret spy training or whatever, and this this word activated, that they've been activated, and that stuck with me this morning too. I kept thinking to myself, we need to get activated because it's we're born with this. You know, we're we're born pure. We're we're God's people. We're His, and we just need to claim it. And I thought, well, we just need to get activated. You know, <laughs> so I mean that that stuck with me this morning too. I had all these things just falling out of my thoughts so uh, that was let's get activated Brains got let it back. get weird has your prayer life increased um, oh, yeah. it because I it, it in everything that goes on in my in everything that goes on in my life i think about i think about the lord and what his purpose yeah. is for what i'm going through or whatever and yeah. that's one thing i've never had a problem with as an adult is knowing that what i'm going through whatever it is or however bad it gets there's a purpose in it. And God so makes good come out of it, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yes. Yeah, so Did you hear me talking about getting activated. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Amen. So Well, and by weird, you know, I be, when you live at home there with any of any people, you know, unsafe spouses. You know, if you get too churchy or religious, that they, they think you're weird or that you've gone off the deep end. You know, and I think it's time, you know, I told, told Aaron this afternoon, you know, you're the spiritual head of your house. And so you need to just do it. You know, pray out loud in front of him. You know, you pray over your, you know, you sit down to eat. Just say, okay, we're going to start praying over our meals, at, you know, and pray over out loud over your kids. Whatever he thinks of it, okay. But you need to just step out and start that's what she yeah. meant by that. Yeah. yeah let let God weird. have his way. Yeah, because yeah. the world thinks that that's weird or off the wall or we've gone, you know, over off the deep end with things. Yeah. Not really. We're just walking it out and, you know, we're the Lord's people. So why should we be afraid of That's right. It's just walking in the spirit, and living right? living it before unsaved people. You know, the spirit of the world is so different than the spirit of God. You know, it's like water and oil. They don't mix. You know, and, you know, we need to make a choice. Um, You know, who are we going to serve? You know, what spirit, what anointing are we going to walk in? And, uh, you know, much, and so it becomes more and more clear to us, especially when the world is going so crazy. You talk about weird. Some of the stuff that's happening out there in the world is weird. Some of the things I hear even on the news. You know the way people are. It's in, out in the world. It's like weird. How? It's it's almost like the more weird it gets, the the, the world thinks the better it is. Mm. You know, and it seems like what we have in Christ is a good solid foundation, a firm footing, right? Yeah. Amen. Anybody else have a testimony to that? Yeah. Phyllis. Yeah. Um. Back to that song. You know. I used to always just pray for my family. But today I found myself praying for the church family. That because, you know, I've seen how it makes such a difference when you care so much, and especially about the kids that are coming in. And some of them that, you know, they, they feel uncomfortable, but they're opening up and seeing how they're blossoming. It is just, it's just a joyful thing. You know, so I mean, I just want to encourage that with with the people kids. will just let us have their kids for yes. Sunday school, for that spiritual teaching and training. Mm-hmm. It'll make a difference in the for the rest of their lives. Yes. You know, and we know this. We've watched it for 37 plus years. We've watched the difference between those that are growing up in the house of God and those that are not. And yes, Judy. Um, we went from last week, we had like one kid for Sunday school to 15 today. So I praise the Lord, you know, even if it's busy. And I had 
you try to organize in your mind how you're going to get your project going and you know so that you have it and and the scriptures and stuff and i had thought i'm going to have zoe pray for us today and like that and that was my intention and i start handing out the snacks to everybody and stuff and i forgot to pray and she says judy you forgot to pray and i went oh i did forget to pray thank you zoe i was planning to have you pray could we you know and then uh, we, she prayed for the group and their snacks, and they, nobody would get sick <laughs> and from what we eat or anything. What a beautiful, young Christian person she is. And then she had us to pray for her because she's got a family member who's not doing well. And so we prayed. We stopped and we prayed for, for her and her family, you know, but... I just praise the Lord for that little girl. She is such a gem. You know, and that, that does remind me, and we'll pray in a moment before we have Tom come up and let him loose. Um, but uh, Brother Gaines, Ed, Brother Ed, Edward Gaines, he pastored over at the Arthur Avenue Church for a while. That's Tina's dad. And so Amber's grandfather. And uh, they're taking him off of dialysis from what we understand and he's not expected to last very long. Uh, he's going to be, he's going to, he's going to get to go and be with the Jesus that he preached for a lot of years, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so keep in mind, um, you know, the the whole family, uh, Pastor Dan and all the family, you know, the kids and grandkids and all of that. Um, you know, it's going to be a difficult time. So uh, we know we've been through it with, you know, with my mother and others. You know, yeah everybody has at some point or other so um, Heavenly Father and we lift up to you brother Gaines we pray dear God for a peaceful departure Lord into your hands into your kingdom Lord he's preached your word for many a year and now he's going to get to graduate and come home to be with you dear God in the in the near future Lord and you have an appointed time Lord let that be in your appointed time and we pray, dear God, for the peace that surpasses all understanding to come upon all of the family, dear God, the, uh, the comfort that only the comfort of the Holy Ghost can bring. Lord, that you would comfort each one, that you would strengthen each one, for we can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth us. And so we pray that you pour out your spirit on all the family members, dear God, and touch them and strengthen them as well, dear Lord. And we pray, dear God, for a coming together, Lord, for just a unity a love and harmony, dear Father, in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Yes. Oh, really? Okay. All right. We'll pray for Catherine then. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you tonight, Catherine Caston, dear God. We pray that you can reach out and touch her. Um, we pray, dear God, that she would overcome through you this sickness, this virus. We rebuke and bind it. We curse it to the root and we command it to be pulled down, to be cast down, to die off and to depart from her body. And then she would be totally and completely healed and restored. Lord, touch her, her body right now with a supernatural strength, a supernatural anointing, dear God, and guard and protect her life, dear Father. Lord, in Jesus' holy name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Um, this morning, um, I had a word of knowledge for Christy, and um, I waited on it and waited on it, and next thing you know, it got to the end of the service, and uh, it got by me, and uh, I'm going to try to seek the Lord and maybe pray and give her a call and, and uh, pray with her later on tonight. You want to remind me of that, honey, when I get home, okay? So uh, it, it's important when we get something to share. And at first I thought, Lord, is it me or is it, you know, is it you? And I think as time went on, I think I think it was. But um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to try to reach her tonight and pray for her. So um, anyway, uh, Tom, if you want to come, brother, and bring us the word tonight. Uh, let's welcome him as he comes up. Amen. 
Do you want my mic, uh, Tom? Okay, I'm going to turn this off then put it on the pulpit. Praise God. Um, let's pray. Again, thank you, Father. Thank you for a wonderful service this morning. Thank you for that salvation that was brought. Thank you, Lord, that nothing, nothing escapes you. And Lord, I thank you that every person, Lord God, who was there this morning got touched by you. Thank you, Father, for your ministry. And Lord Jesus, I commit myself, I commit my heart, my life, my speaking, my preaching, my thinking, everything that I do that night, Father, I give glory to you because you're the one that's on the throne. And Lord, today I pray that you would bless my brothers and sisters, Lord, with your love, with your anointing, with your presence, Lord. Continue with us, Lord. And I pray, Father, that there would be a, a, a joy that would fill, Lord, the airways, Lord. And I thank you, Father, that we are in the heavenlies tonight. We are in the heavenlies. And I pray, Father, that you would help us to continue to walk with you and talk with you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm glad it's Sunday. Um, yesterday, I had the experience of taking a nap in the afternoon because I was not feeling good. And about 5 o'clock... I got this knock on the door, and I didn't hear it. All of a sudden, I, like, this pillow got pushed down and got pushed down and got pushed down. And uh, Judy says, Tom, Tom, are you going to go and preach tonight? <laughs> I was one day ahead. <laughs> I said, no, it's Saturday. My wife came in and she said, no, it's Sunday. And I says, no, it's Saturday. You just woke me up out of a dead sleep. <laughs> so we had a great time with that. <laughs> uh, I know that she's going to do that again. I just know that. And she's going to do it on purpose this time. <laughs> I know my wife. <laughs> so... We had a week like that. We just didn't know what day of the week it was. So I, I forgive her. I forgive her so much. <laughs> she is so good. Anyway, I want to take us into the word tonight of what God wants to do with us. Um, how he brought us to salvation and what he wants us to live. So... Uh, in, in, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created the heavens and the earth, and he brought us into relationship with him. He brought Adam and Eve into relationship with him. Adam and Eve were created for his workmanship, for his fellowship, for being with him. And every part of our lives every part of Adam's life was given so that God would be glorified. God was glorified in what he did. Uh, in creation, and mark me if I'm wrong, but the first five days of creation creation of the earth, the creation of the firmaments, the creation of every part of this world, the birds and the animals and the trees, and all that good stuff that God made. He said, he did say, it is good. And then the sixth day he created man. He created them, male and female, Adam and Eve. He created man and woman, and he said, it is very good. It is very good because he made 
man in his own image. Man was made in God's image. We weren't made in anything else's image. We were made in God's image. And God has a purpose. So when I was thinking about this, I was thinking how, how wonderful it is that when God looks at us, he sees a wonderful creation. He sees a wonderful creation. And we took it, Adam and Eve took it, and what happened? We're, we're going through a, the Bible study, the Purple Book, and the Purple Book, the very first chapter, talks about creation, and it talks about something that happened during creation, and that was God gave a rule. The rule that God gave was don't eat of the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of the good and, good and evil. Don't eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the rule was given to Adam and Eve. Satan decided that it was time to go ahead and tempt them. And I think, I think he tempted Eve when she was hungry. She might have had a little bit of a hunger pang. And he said, take a look. Did God really say that you shouldn't eat of this beautiful fruit that's in this tree? Well, it looked good. It looked really, really good. Uh, and it was tempting. And Satan, using the serpent, who was very cunning, very clever, very beautiful, he used that to tempt Eve. And she ate it. She ate of the tree that was in the garden. And what did Adam do? Eve told Adam, and Adam said, okay. He ate it too. And he didn't follow God's rule. He didn't follow what God said that he should do. Adam started something going. It was separation from God. Jesus, or God said that when, if you do eat of the tree of good and evil, you shall surely die. You shall surely die. And what happened? They didn't die physically, but they died spiritually. They were dead spiritually at that point. They had lost their fellowship with God. And from that point on, things were totally different. Upside down, inside out, you name it. Things got really bad. And what happens in our life? <sighs> what happened in his life? He was given a chance to obey. And what happened? He did not appreciate Adam, Adam didn't appreciate what God had given, <laughs> you know, and so he, he disobeyed. What happens to us? We might see something very good, something that looks good, but it might not be the best for us. Something that God says, no, I don't want you to touch that. I don't want you to have that. I don't want you to go for that. We might say, no, God, I know better. That thing looks better than what, you know, what you're saying. And you take it. And you're hurt. You're hurt. So Adam began, the inclin began the person's, our, our people's desire for sinful things. He, it, 
he, 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 he introduced sin into this world. He introduced sin into this creation. It wasn't something that was easy. <laughs> and then what happened? There was shame. There was shame that came into Adam. Adam and Eve had an understanding that they had done something wrong. And they went, what did they do? They hid. They went to hide. They hid themselves underneath the trees. And they did something more than that. They sewed up fig leaves and put it on themselves. Well, I, re I, I looked it up. Fig leaves are very, uh, they're almost like sandpaper on one side. And the other side has little hairs on it. And these hairs are really stiff and prickly. It's almost like putting on a prickly bush. And so either side was, and, and the edges of the fig leaf are serrated. So, I mean, they were getting, I mean, any way that they would have put it on would have been hurting. <laughs> uh, we don't know who the seamstress was or the, or the sewer was. <laughs> But uh, the, they put on fig leaves, something that they put on to hide the shame, to hide the shame, the shame that they had on the inside, that they had done something wrong. And then they realized they were naked. They were exposed. And they are exposed because of sin. God had pity on them. <laughs> God had pity on them. He took a lamb, or uh, he took a, a, an animal and made skins out of them. And the animal skins that he gave, I'm sure, were a lot more comfortable than the fig leaves that he had on them, that they had on them. And they were smooth and soft and easy to put on and stay on. God does that for us, doesn't he? God does that for us. He allows us to, uh, well, he, he takes that, that part of us that has something of shame, and he takes it and releases us from it. And he covers us with himself. He covers, covers us with himself. The separated fellowship, the separated fellowship with God is something that had consequences. The consequences were uh, not hearing God's voice, not having fellowship in the quiet of the day. And uh, every person has had experience of sin. I know we have. What is the definition of sin? The definition of sin, I believe, very quickly, is missing the mark. Missing the mark. I, I missed the mark of uh, what God had intended. What is the mark that God had intended? That Adam would not sin by taking the, not the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Of good and evil. God is so good. God is so good. So, like I said, we've been starting a new Bible study. And uh, thank you, Pastor, for allowing us to do that. Um, we will not try, we'll try not to distract from evening service, evening Bible studies, because, you know, it's important that we our evangelizing. It's important that we have fellowship with each other. And uh, what God is doing in the evening Bible studies is fantastic. It is really good. And I want to share some things about what happened, hap what's happening in our
Bible study in the morning. Um, we started off this last week uh, with house rules, <laughs> with Bible study rules. And the reason why we started the Bible study is so that we could help new Christians learn. And we want new Christians to learn. New Christians have to learn the Bible. They have to learn who they are, what they are, and what God has created them for. And this Bible study hopefully will help that understanding. So one of the house rules, the very first one, and uh, this is kind of cool. Uh, God gave it to me as I was praying about the about the fellowship that we'd have together and the love that we'd have together. And the Lord said, uh, "Anything that's shared here is going to be shared in public. It is no secret in our Bible study." Anything we share in our Bible study in the morning will go everywhere. <laughs> it'll be broadcast. It'll be published. It'll be given out for everybody to hear. Because we can have fellowship unbroken with each other if there's no secrets. What happened to Adam and Eve when they had secrets? They hid themselves. They tried to hide themselves because they had a secret. The secret was that they had eaten. God asked them, what did you do? What did you do? And Adam says, we ate of the tree that you told us not to. So we are going to be above reproach in that when we are in that fellowship, we're going to say stuff that's going to edify. We're going to say stuff that's going to be uplifting. We're going to say stuff that's going to be glorifying to our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is glorified. He is glorified when we put him first. You know? The other one of the rules that we have in the Bible study is that we are going to be praying for our pastor. Five minutes during the time of the Bible study. And we're going to be praying for him as the bishop. We're going to be praying for him as the pastor of our church. We're praying for him as the father of his children, as the grandfather of his children. We're praying for him as the uh, head of this church, as the, the guy who is going to hear from God every week to give us food in the spiritual realm. We're going to pray for the pastor that God gives him strength, that God gives him abilities. We're going to be praying for pastor. All that he does, his entrepreneurial wor uh, work that he's doing, his extra stuff, we're praying for that. We're going to be praying for that. And I, I thank God that he gave us that opportunity. I challenge the people that were at the Bible study, pray for each other one minute every day for each person. When well, we had seven people there, and the pastor, so I mean, pastor wasn't there physically, but we're going to be praying for pastor. And, uh, but, you know, it's eight minutes. I figure people are going to have a hard time with that because it's hard to pray for eight to ten minutes at a time. And yet, when you think about it, each person in that room, each person in that Bible study is an important part of each other. And as we grow, each, grow with each other and grow to know each other, we're going to have fellowship and we're going to love each other. We're going to grow in, in character and from that our love for each other will grow. And so that we can, that praying for you or for the other person in that fellowship is going to be easy. And it will be. And I thank God that he gave us who he has coming to the Bible study. And it's a, every person, Lord, every person is important. 
as well as every person is important at night. Every person is important. I would really appreciate your prayers for us so that we can uh, accomplish what God wants us to accomplish in this Bible study because uh, I believe that God wants us to be able to share, to teach, to be able to to disciple, to be able to tell others how to grow, to be able to tell others how we grew, and then to be able to share with them how God wants them to grow. So, um, what do you, have you ever heard about that before, or heard heard that concept before? Never to uh, it, it's kind of new to me uh, that we don't share anything that we're not going to be uh, expecting anybody else to hear. <laughs> you know, keep it quiet. Plus, usually, usually, when it when it's shared here, or like like it like the world saying, you know, if it happens in Vegas, it stays in Vegas. Well, nah, that's not what it's going to be. If, when it happens here, it's going to happen all over. You know, when it's shared here, it's going to be shared all over. So, what is the purpose of God? Redemption. Redemption is what God's purpose is. When God saw Adam and Eve, he saw them with a heart that wanted them to be different, wanted them to be saved <laughs> from their sin. God had a purpose already. And when he slaughtered that animal or killed that animal to take his skin, it was a representation of taking the blood and covering the person. Because without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. There is no covering of sins, forgiveness of sins. There is no forgiveness of sins without blood. And we celebrated this morning the blood of Jesus. And we know that he has caused us to be new in our hearts because of the blood of Christ. The blood of Jesus is what cleanses us. It cleanses us from all sin, all unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is everybody's problem. <laughs> I mean, if you look at what's happening in Ukraine, all that started because of unrighteousness. It started because of selfishness, because of one in their own way. And what happens with us when we are in sin? We want our own way. We want our own way. It says, every one of us has gone astray. We have gone, everyone, to his own way. And there is a judgment for sin, and that is death. There is a judgment for sin for all of us, and that's death. Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood so that there would be a covering for us. That covering is Jesus. That covering is his blood. And he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. My righteousness is as filthy rags. What I can do is it stinks. <laughs> I mean, and the filthy rags that they're talking about there are very, very, very unsanitary cloths. You would not want to touch them, let alone put them on. And we try to put them on ourselves. But what those things are, and God takes those un, uh, unclean things off and he covers us with his blood. He covers us with his righteousness, his glory, his himself. He covers us with himself. So when Jesus came into this world, he came in as I shared with you uh, 
in December that when the angels were proclaiming, he came in as the Savior. He came in as the Messiah, the one that was being looked for. And they proclaimed him with great joy. And that's what happens with us when we have sins covered up, sins that are healed, sins that are forgiven. We have complete control of, uh, we have complete forgiveness, forgiveness of sin. When Jesus died on the cross, the Father had to turn away. He had to go like this. He couldn't watch. He couldn't look. He had a. The Father had to turn away from Jesus because of sin. So that when Jesus said it is finished, and that He did His work, that every that God could look upon us again. And he looked upon his son and he says that that was good enough. In the Old Testament, there was a way of, of handling sin, and that was through sacrifices of animals. But the sacrifice of animals always fell short because it had to be done every year. It had to be done by the high priest. The high priest sometimes wasn't good enough and he would be He would, he would die. They would tie ropes to the high priest when he went into the Holy of Holies. And they had bells tied on his, on his clothes. And if, you, if they didn't hear the bell for a long time, and they, they, would, they would pull on the rope, pull the person out, because maybe he was uh, slain because of the fact that he wasn't good enough because he didn't follow the rules and he was slain so it was un, it was a sacrifice that had to be done every year by a high priest for the people of Israel and Jesus came and did that sacrifice only once only once my heart is so thankful that when Jesus was at that supper table like we heard this morning. And he said, remember this. He was telling them to remember that Jesus, that he, that he made that sacrifice for us only once. And what happened? That veil, there was a veil in the, in the uh, temple that covered the people from being able to see God. And that veil was ripped in half. It was ripped in half. And what made it better? It was ripped in half from top to bottom. Not from bottom to top, but from top to bottom. Because God is the one that ripped it open. God ripped it open through the blood of Jesus. And we now have access to God. We have access to our Lord Jesus Christ. And he has the ability to hear our words, to hear us pray. And because of the blood, we have access to God. Thank you, Jesus. I want to thank God for the opportunity that uh, he has for all of us to get saved. <laughs> thank you, Jesus, for that lady this morning. I thank God for the way that he has given us a choice, a choice to give ourselves to him, a, so, a choice to give ourselves over to his life. Wow. I want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your patience with us. Thank you, Jesus, for your love for us. Thank you, Jesus, for your concern for us, Lord. 
we need you. We need your heart. We need your love. We need your counsel. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would bring us to a place, Lord God, bring us to the place where we have you in the center of our lives, Lord. And I thank you, Father, for each person that's listening to this, that that they're hearing you, that they're hearing your love, you're, they're hearing your, your care for them. And Lord, I pray that you would touch and meet their needs, Father, meet the needs of the people that you have given already, Lord, that you're going to give to them, Lord God, what they need. Father, I pray that you would guide us and lead us, Lord, and help us to be triumphant in our walk with you. Help us to be clean, to be new, to be whole. And I thank you, Father, for your love for us. And I pray, Father, that there would be great opportunities, Lord God, in the future to uh, be able to share your salvation with other people, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Tom. What a reminder of the cost of salvation, huh? You know, and the shedding of one's blood. Uh, for, as he said, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission, no forgiveness of sins, right? And so it took a blood sacrifice, you know, for people to be, you know, to be forgiven of their sins. In the Old Testament, it was animals that were slain, right? And, uh, and then Jesus came along in the New Testament, and he was God's sacrificial what? Lamb, right? And his blood, the sinless blood of Jesus, was the only blood that could provide salvation for us. No animal, nobody, nothing else, only through Jesus. That's why the word says, the, you, know, the, you know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? No man cometh unto the Father but my, by me. So... Uh, we thank God that he is our access to the Father. Uh, he is the one that uh, makes a way for us to be able to have eternal life. Praise God. So uh, that's awesome. Thank you, Tom, for uh, sharing. Amen. That's, that's uh, quite a reminder about the significance of uh, the cost of sin. Anybody need prayer tonight before we close? Is there anybody that uh, needs prayer tonight? Just come on up if you need prayer. Just slip out of your pew and come on up. couple online. Okay, what are the online ones, Lori? Okay. All right. Okay. And uh, any other ones? Okay. So, Heavenly Father, we lift up to you, Lorraine and Jose, and dear God, that you would reach out and touch them, and we ask, dear God, that you would cover them with that blood of Jesus and healing, saving, forgiving blood of Jesus, Lord, that brings healing to one's body. Lord, we believe it by faith. We receive it by faith. We speak it, dear God, over their bodies that they would be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, we rebuke this sickness and command it to go in the name of Jesus, and we call forth your healing power, Father, in Jesus' holy and powerful name we pray. And everybody said... Amen and amen. Praise God. Uh, anybody else need prayer tonight? All right. Um, let's, uh, I think I'll just close out with a prayer then, okay? Uh, Father, we thank you tonight, dear God, for your word being preached. We thank you for the worship, the time together, the fellowship. Um, we just love you, Lord. We love to come into the house of God and worship you and exalt you and glorify you and to hear your word. Lord, and to be with our brothers and sisters in the Lord. We thank you and we praise you for this opportunity, dear God. And we pray, Lord, that you continue to pour out your spirit on us each day, all week long, every day of our life, dear God, that you would have your way in our hearts and lives. Father, in Jesus' holy name we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. God bless you all. Be blessed, all right? And those online, be blessed. Have a great week, okay?